What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another tech tip here at 45 Drives. Today, we're going to be talking about a stunt that we did recently at the Creator Summit. So this one was really fun to show off. It was actually done with Wendell and I, which was really cool. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off my portion of the demo. And stay tuned, though, because we are going to actually refilm his portion of the demo as well. We'll talk about why we can't do it today. What we're going to show off today is a Proxmox cluster, hyperconverged Ceph and Proxmox in a three node arrangement, which is back behind me. But we're going to do it without the need for a high bandwidth switch. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called mesh networking. And that means each node is connected to each other node in this three node configuration with a hundred gigabit uh, network. Um, so without further ado, let's dive in and we'll talk about it more. All right. So to just set the stage and kind of explain some of the pieces, talk about how we achieve this. So we're using something called FRR, free range routing in the Linux uh, operating system. So the Linux network stack is pretty robust by default. It's got lots of features, but FRR, free range routing, brings on a whole bunch of new technologies that we can adapt into the Linux kernel, into the Linux uh, ecosystem. So this allows us to build an open fabric uh, and a routed open fabric at that. So what that means is each node is connected to each other node in the, in the topology. And uh, we'll show a picture of what that looks like up on the screen. And so what's really cool about this is it's actually using routed mode too. So if you lose one connection, so if the connection from node one to node three is broken or gets lost, node one can route through node two to get to node three. So you actually don't get any downtime at all. And we're using something called rapid spanning tree protocol. So you probably know spanning tree protocol, but we're using rapid spanning tree protocol to make sure that the link uh, switchover is instant. So there's no blips whatsoever. And in practice, it is exactly that. It's instant. So it's really, really cool to show off. Um, and so, yeah, we're building an open fabric on our three nodes with 100 gigabit interfaces. Um, and we're going to show that off. So what I did also to make this demo kind of more realistic in a real life scenario we set up a really cool little uh, fake NVR camera setup. And so what I did was I have a web server and we're gonna show that off. And it's streaming multiple different uh, video streams. We've got 10 videos that are on a loop, but we have a hundred cameras running. So uh, I'll show that in the web server here in a second. And so we're recording all of those streams to our NVR cameras back to the 7FS file system. So that's a bunch of IO being generated on the system. And then I've got a cool script that we're going to run while all this is happening. And what it's going to do, it's going to provision a bunch of virtual machines. It's going to then migrate them to balance them across all three nodes. Then it's going to run a backup of every single virtual machine through Proxmox backup server. And then once it's done that, it will just sit and be complete. So we can actually watch this in real time while it's happening as well. So let's dive in and take a look. All right, guys. So here we got our three Proxmox environments. We can see we have our web server. So if I click over onto my web server uh, UI here, we can see those streams that I was talking about. These are just random MP4 streams that I pulled off the internet sample videos. Um, but we can see it's only showing 20 of them right now. I mean, I can add more by just clicking add additional eight more, but really it's just gonna eventually really slow this down. So let's just keep it there. We don't need to show anymore, but there is a hundred of them running simultaneously right now. So now what we're gonna do is we have these video streams. So now we have to simulate the NVR software that is grabbing that stream and recording it back. So we're going to spin up a hundred cameras, one camera for each stream. So we'll head over to our Proxmox environment here. And I just got a quick little loop that we can do that will SSH into our NVR machine. So we can see we have NVR demo on Proxmox 1, NVR demo 2, NVR demo three. So NVR four, we actually aren't using. I could shut that down. And so we're going to do 33-ish, I think, um, to each one. Let me make sure that's the case. Uh, I'll take a look at my loop here. So we can see, yeah, one to 34, 35 to 67, and 68 to 100. So give or take 33 each, one will have an extra. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to run this loop. This will SSH into the first NVR machine and spin up all of our cameras. Okay, so we can see that's happening now. 
Now, if I head to Proxmox, I should be able to already see some Ceph traffic. And yes, we do. We can see we are reading and writing, which is exactly what we would expect. Okay, so that's great. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's add the second and third um, NVR camera streams so we can add go all the way up to 100. All right, so there is the second group going. And I will grab the last one right here. Okay, so all that goes, we'll head back to CephS. We can see there's our stream, 178. 180 megabytes, maybe bytes a second, 251. So we're a little higher now. Now we have all 100 cameras going. It's a fairly low bit rate video, so um, nothing too crazy, but we could scale this up as large as we needed to. So yeah, so we're, we're getting close to like 250, 300 megabytes a second. So cool, not bad at all. Um, before I go any further though, let's take a look at what our open uh, FRR uh, open fabric actually looks like. Because if you actually go to the host of the Proxmox nodes and you look for the IP address for our Ceph network, you're not going to find it. So if we see, let's cat our Etsy Ceph configuration. We can see that we're using 10, 15, 50, 51, 52. Again, fully private mesh network. But we can see it's not on the host. That's because we have to head into our special... Uh, shell, our VTYSH shell, to actually take a look at the fabric itself. So now that we're inside of it, we can show the open fabric route. And this is where all of our routes are happening. And this is how the open fabric knows where the next hop to go is when it needs to send traffic to node two or node three. We actually also have a, a fourth hop in this one as well. And that is because I have a Proxmox backup server and I wanted the Proxmox backup server to actually be able to communicate over the 100 gigabit networking so we can get the full performance. I didn't want Proxmox backup server to have to go over the one gig. So there's also an additional route in this fabric to account for that. So we can see that's there, that looks good. Um, so we can exit, so that is our fabric and that's how we can have a non-switched, fully high performance, 100 gigabit SEP cluster, Proxmox cluster hyperconverged. Um, and this really, I mean, obviously, if you need high bandwidth uh, and you only need to start with three nodes, it's a fantastic way to save 10, 20 grand, depending on the 100 gigabit switch you go with. And it is super low latency and super high performance. You're really able to saturate uh, that link if you have the hardware to do so. All right, so we've got our, our NVR cameras running. Let's now spin up our demo and let's see what's going to happen here. So... The demo, like I said, is going to provision some VMs. So we're going to see that on the side here. A bunch of VMs are going to get created on PV1. Then once they're all up and running, it's going to migrate them across the hosts. Then it is going to do some backups. All right, so let's take a look. So we can see it's creating its VMs, creating all that disk I.O. We can hear the, the storage servers are getting a little louder in the background. <laughs> We take a look at our CephS. We're definitely reading and writing at about one gigabyte a second now because we are doing a bunch more I/O. Here are all our VMs. Look, we've got demo one all the way to demo nine. So looks like everything's good. Okay, the demo VMs have now started, and immediately we can see the migrations are kicking in. So one has already migrated over, and they're going to do that one at a time for best practices. I mean, we could migrate multiple virtual machines at a time, but what's the rush? Um, it's possible for having more issues if you're gonna do that. So we're just gonna do one at a time, it's still very quick. And the reason why it's so quick is because we're not dumping disk data at all. All we're doing is dumping the RAM of each virtual machine to the other host. And then the disk follows over because it is fully highly available Ceph storage, of course. Um, and so here we go. We're just in the midst of our, our migrations and we'll head over to our cluster. So this shows, again, the IO has now dropped off again on this cluster because all the disks are created, all that burst DIO is done, and the migrations is actually not happening at all on Ceph, because all they're doing is dumping RAM from one host to another. So once all of the VMs migrate, though, and we start our backups, we will see another big hit on the Ceph cluster. All right, so where are we at here? Let's go back to our script. So we're migrating VM112. There it is right there. Looks good. So now we have 
three VMs on host two or three demo host VMs on host two, two on host three, and four on host one. So there should be one more migration if I am correct in that. And it's VM113. And yes, there it is. All right. So there we go. So now we should have three on each host. That looks good. Now we're going to see once the migrations are all done, now our backups are going to start. So we can see starting backups per node on storage PBS. That's our Proxbox backup server. And we'll wait for this to occur. And actually, while we, while we wait here, what we can do is we can take a look at our machine. We can go to backups. And we can click on our PBS backup. And we can see, okay, we have one backup that was done on the 11th. So that's not today. So we're going to wait. Oh, and there we can see. See this little image here? Uh, we can see that the demo, uh, the backups are occurring here. So, all right, so I'll head back to this guy. Take a look, and there's my new backup. All right, so we've got our demo 7 VM that just ran on October 1st. We can see its size is 25.77 gigabytes. Um, and what's really cool is because we're using Proxmox backup server, it's not just uh, we have to roll, we can roll back the entire VM. We have the ability to click on file restore and actually restore individual files if we want to. So we don't have to roll back the whole machine. If we deleted a file mistakenly or something like that, we have access to this. So we can just pop right into the file system structure and we can pull any file we need to. So if we had to pull out a configuration file, for example, that we deleted by accident, you could come into Etsy. And we could pull on one of our comp files. Uh, let's see, uh, dracut.com, let's host.com. So we can see here, so we can click download. Boom, goes right to the desktop. So now we can use that. We can move it over onto the VM, the live VM now, and uh, have access to it, which is really, really cool. All right, our backups, I think, are probably complete. Let's take a look. Yep, PV2, PV3. Looks good to me. So that went off without a hit. So now we've still got the IO happening on the cluster here, right? But we talked about how this is routed mesh network. So what would happen if I was to pull one of my connections completely out of the cluster? Would we get a health warning? Uh, well, the answer is no. And that's the really cool thing. We're not even going to get a health warning, even though two of the nodes have no direct connection to each other. You're going to lose a little bit of overall bandwidth, but if you're not saturating your total bandwidth, that's totally fine. And your latency is going to go up by a fraction. But in the grand scheme of things, that's pretty darn good. You can lose an entire connection with no switch and still be completely health okay, completely running. So I'll keep this going. We can see we've got the IO running as normal. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull one of the connections completely from this uh, configuration. And just to show you what this looks like, uh, this is essentially the topology that we have here. So we can see node one, ENS 18, so its first 100 gig interface, goes into ENS 19 of node two. Then ENS 19, the second interface of node one, goes into the first interface of node three, and then the remaining ones on node two and three connect to each other. So we've got that nice big round robin loop where everything is connected to everything else. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove ENS 18 connection from node one to the ENS 19 connection of node two. And we'll watch Cephas while that happens. So we'll have this up. All right, so we're gonna head over now and let's do it. So we'll watch this live while I do it. All right, so we got node one here. I've got the connection from node one going all the way to, hold on, a little messy here. Make sure that we get the right one. There we go. Okay, so connection one is going into connection two of node two. So first we'll pull this one and we'll pull this one. We only have two connections remaining. And connection one, node one, has no connection whatsoever with node two. So let's go ahead and we head back to our cluster. And as we see, health okay. The IO is still going. Everything is still working. Let's take a look elsewhere. Is Proxbox still up? Are all the VMs still up? Everything looks good here. Let's take a look. Is CephFS still working properly? Yep, it's all still responding. So there you go. 
So now we are, every bit of the traffic is just going through that, that routed hop back to node two. So any IO from node one that has to go to node two goes node one to three, node three back to two. Yeah, and there you have it. Pretty, pretty slick, pretty awesome behavior. Um, obviously, now let's talk about drawbacks or, or why you may not want to do this. Um, I think this makes a ton of sense in a small three node configuration. You could even probably get away with a five node. Uh, you're going to need more and more network interfaces for each uh, node you add to the cluster, but it just becomes a little more unruly uh, as you go larger and larger. So I think it fits perfectly for environments, small business, maybe that need a small, highly available hypervisor with storage at a really good budget cost. You can do this extremely simply with three nodes. Make sure you have enough CPU, RAM for Ceph and your VMs, of course. Make sure you have enough bandwidth. So if you need only need 10 gigabits, you can run 10. If you need 100. But in this case, since we're not using a switch, if you don't have any plans to rapidly expand, I mean, there's no, why, why wouldn't you just go to 100 gig because you're not paying all that extra cost for the switching. But if you're planning on expanding out, if you don't want to spend on that big 100 gigabit infrastructure, maybe you start with just 10 gigabit direct connect with each other and eventually buy a 10 gig switch. But other than that, this is a super rock solid way to run a hyperconverged Proxmox and Ceph cluster. Now, what's coming up in the second part? So this was my part of the demo. Uh, Wendell had a really cool part as well. So what he showed off is the new Intel Arc GPUs doing vGPU license free um, in Proxmox. And so during our, our Creator Summit stunt, we actually ended up running Crisis because of course we did um, showing off a VDI environment. So we did kind of a VDI environment with no accelerated graphics and we ran Unigen Heaven and saw exactly how choppy it was. It was like one FPS a second. Then we sliced up that Intel Arc uh, B50 GPU and gave it a slice of it. And we ran that same benchmark where we're getting hundreds of FPS. So we're going to recreate that in the lab now. We're still waiting on some drivers. The SRIOV drivers are coming. Uh, we've got some of the Intel Arc new GPUs here. So we're doing some testing and trying to get it running. So that video will be coming soon. And what's really cool is we're going to show off running Crisis on a virtual machine and then migrating that virtual machine live while you're still running Crisis and seeing if you notice that your virtual machine is now running on a complete different host. So your video game is just hopping between servers. Uh, really, really cool concept. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's about it. That's everything I wanted to show off. If there's any questions, feel free to ask. I'll definitely be in the comments uh, and we'll see you on the next one. You're way too